How are you guys all doing? It's time for this week's Twisted Devotion, where I'm going to explain to you how I came about getting this necklace. It's a pretty crazy necklace. It's got some form of a jungle um, wildcat skull here uh, with a seed with these parrot feathers sticking out of it and miscellaneous vertebrae and beads about my neck. And I'm going to tell you how I came about this. We were in Peru and we were uh, uh, finishing a, a yearly mission trip. It was usually about a month long, and I wanted something to take home that was cultural. We had been doing a lot of work, and I wanted there to be a, a cultural experience. And so our host was named Pastor Jose. Awesome man. He's a strong man, and, a, and a, he loves Jesus, and he, and he knew exactly. He said, Pastor Sean, he says, I know, perfecto. Uh, he spoke no English. I spoke no Spanish. So a lot of what's going to happen is because we weren't communicating very well. But he says, I want to introduce you, he said this in Spanish, to an, a native tribe that's primitive. They've, they're still living the way they've lived for hundreds of years, and, and they're preserving their heritage, and they're deep in the jungle, and I know how to get to them. And so I'm like, well, is this appropriate? Because the team was all teenagers. We was a bunch of youth. And he says, oh, see, sí, oh, no problem. And so we get in a banana boat, and the banana boats are great. A banana boat is a long boat that has been made out of hand-carved lumber out of the jungle. And it's usually got like a Briggs and Stratton motor with a long shaft off there with a propeller. And it's super loud, and the exhaust comes into your lungs. And it's, brrr, and it's got a little covering. And they use these boats because they draft really shallow. And they carry a tremendous amount of weight. And they use them for hauling bananas and for hauling mangoes and hauling produce and pigs and people. And so we're in this banana boat, and we're going up uh, what's called the Penguana. It's a tributary into the headwaters of the Amazon. And so we're going up this jungle river. And I mean, it's straight out of a movie. The sides are steep, dense vegetation. All you can hear is a brrrr of the ocean. It's just, it's a National Geographic moment, okay? And we're going up, and all of a sudden, we hear boom, 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 boom. Jungle drums. I'm not joking you. Jungle drums. And we look up, and there are these natives, and they're standing up there wearing a little loincloth and some feathered headdresses, and they're like, ah, and they come running down. And I'm not joking. I, I had an adrenaline dump. It was, it was crazy. I mean, this is a, a, an ancient experience I'm having here. And they come up, and they help us drag our boat up onto the shore, and we all follow them up this trail, this winding jungle trail. They're barefoot. Their skin's like leather. And we're following them up. We go across this rope bridge straight out of an Indiana Jones movie. I'm not sure it's going to hold up. The boards are creaking. The ropes are tattered. We go across it, and we end up coming into the main community lodge. Again, straight out of um, a storybook. There's the, the roof is all banana leaves all thatched together. The walls are made out of, uh, of this material, um, which is the beaten, uh, beaten bark of, a, of one of the jungle trees. And so we're getting ready to head in, and one of the younger members of the team runs up ahead, has a lot of energy, pokes his head into the, into the room, and turns out and pu pulls his head out of the house, and he turns to everybody and says, okay, everybody, act natural. At which point I'm thinking, I don't want to act natural. I'm going to be natural. So we go in, and what we find out is that the little loincloth thing is evidently the dress code for this, this, this tribe, whether you're male or female or old or young. And, um, and again, like I said, it's a loincloth made out of a flattened bark. I, I, I got this from them. This is the Bora fabric. And it's, it's, a beaten, uh, it's a beaten bark. And this, truthfully, is enough to dress two people. All right, this is enough to make a suit for two because they have a little flap like this over the front and a little flap like this over the back. Oh, and it doesn't matter what sex you are, age you are, anything else. That's what they're wearing. And so major uh, wardrobe malfunctions here because the, the, the loincloths don't work. Okay, you can see everything. So essentially, I have a group of teenagers, and we're in a building, in, the, in, a, in a house in the middle of the jungle filled with naked people. And I'm thinking, like, I'm done for. Well, it just goes downhill from this. Um, we end up, they ask, who's the leader? And they say, oh, Pastor Sean. And they make me sit down on this little bench. And the women all come up, and, and they're, then they put this on me. And so they're standing, and I'm sitting, so the elevation thing's just not working for me. And I'm, like, looking at the ceiling going, guys, look at that ceiling. 
Look at the jungle engineering. This is amazing. I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm just uh, dying slowly. And I'm going to save you so many of the embarrassing moments, but there's dancing and, and stuff. And, and I'm pretty much sure that I'm done as a pastor. Well, we get through all of this and Pastor Jose comes up and he says, Shao, the Bora is Cristiano. I said, I beg your pardon? He says, see, the Bora is Cristiano. I said, the Bora are Christians? And they all gather up and they all get these sweet smiles on their face when they find and And they... And they, he says, they want to sing a song to you. Because the chief of the Bora speaks Spanish. And Pastor Jose obviously speaks Spanish. And he said, they would like to sing a, a worship song for you. Is that okay? And we're like, yeah. And so they start singing in this real sing-song Bora language. It's beautiful. The only word I can recognize is Iesu, Jesus. They're singing to Jesus in the Bora. And then they say, would you sing us a song in your language? And so... We sing Amazing Grace, and then they sing another song in Bora, we sing another song in English, and we're going back and forth singing praise songs. And I'm thinking, we're in the jungle, worshiping Jesus with naked people. And I, I was broken at that moment, because I'll be honest with you, when we went in there, I was mad. I was angry. I'm like, what? who are these people? What kind of pagans are these? They run around naked. They let the kids run around nothing. No, they don't even do the loincloth on the kids. Kids are running around until essentially adulthood on um, commando. I'm like, and, and then did they not even think that I'm bringing in a bunch of youth that they should have put some clothes on? And I'm really, you know, I've got a bad attitude about it. I'll just be honest. Um, and now I'm realizing, like, this is their culture. This is the way they live. I'm the guest, and they're Christians. And the reason that I bring up this story for you is because we're Canon Christian Academy and we have our student body represents probably 20 plus between 20 and 30 different congregations we have liturgical we have Pentecostal we have fundamentalist we have charismatic we have non-denominationalist we have all the different flavors if you will of Christianity and yet we can exist together, and you probably didn't even recognize that there was this many differences within the school. How is it that we can fellowship together? Well, part of it has to do with our name. Our name is Canon Christian Academy. And Canon is not Canon with two N, C A N N O N. That's the boom Canon you put on a pirate ship. We are Canon C A N O N, which comes from the Greek Canon which means the measuring rod or the, or the ruler. It's that which you hold something up to as a standard. And we have a canon, and it's called the Bible. And when it comes to the Bible, we, we want unity. In fact, there is a statement in the church that goes way, way back. And it's, And necessitias uh, unitas, and dubius uh, libertas, and omnibus and what that means is, in the essentials, unity. In the unknown, liberty. And in all things, charity or love. It was attributed to Augustine of Hippo. So it goes way back to the very beginnings of the church. But it really became a popular phrase during, uh, after the just the onslaught of the Thirty Year War. And it, and it was a war between Catholics and Protestants and and, and in, in the 1600s, and it really came into meaning like, hey guys, we gotta get this together. And so I think that that needs to be the statement of who we are. We are Christians. And on the, on the unity things, and so you say, well, but what are the essentials? Well, there's, the, the list of essentials isn't really that long. And it, it's been encapsulated through the course of history in, in creeds, once the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended unto Gehenna, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended unto heaven to the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from which he shall judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the universal church. I believe in the, un the community of saints. I believe in the resurrection of the body and the forgiveness of sins and in life everlasting. Amen. And uh, 
That's one version, there's different creeds. But as you see there, really what it means is we believe that salvation is by grace, through faith in Christ, the blood of Christ, according to the Bible, which we believe is the word of God. Um, we believe that God is one God and that he's manifest himself to us as our Father, who's our creator, through Jesus the Christ, who is our Savior, and, and through the Holy Spirit, which indwells in us and gives us the power to live out the gospel, the good news of God, that we who are sinners can be transformed into those who are forgiven and, and to, to love one another as Christ loved us. Um, these are the essentials. Other things, maybe the way we worship, maybe uh, whether we must speak in tongues or can speak in tongues or don't speak in tongues, or we baptize by dunking or we baptize by sprinkling or we um, baptize at different ways, how often we take communion. There's a lot of other things that are not essentials and we can differ on. And so there, there we have liberty, we have freedom, and, uh, and all things love. So I learned this, unfortunately, by being exposed by being exposed, by taking way outside of my comfort zone and seeing Christianity in a form I'd never seen it. Um, I treasure this. And so um, um, that's, that's the, the twisted devotion for this week. However, the story doesn't end there. It wasn't just that God was trying to teach me something. This ends up turning into even a more epic story, which I'd like to complete next week, uh, that involves um, this gentleman right here. And so we'll, we'll get to that next week. But until then, I just want to tell you I love you. I'm praying for you and I encourage you to love the Father, follow the Son, be filled with the Spirit, and shine for the glory of God. And we'll see you soon.